What's up guys, welcome to a brand new YouTube video. It's your girl Nicole Dewis, and today I am running you through the only leg workout that you will ever need to grow glutes that you are absolutely obsessed with. And spoiler alert, we're not gonna be doing any bizarre, like super whack movements. We are going to stick to the fundamentals, the basic movements that I know are proven to work. It doesn't matter if you're brand new to the gym or if you're a freaking bodybuilding veteran, these movements are for everybody. I have been doing the same leg movements year after year because I know that's how you get results. And my physical transformation is proof of that. So I did these workouts when I was in the process of losing the freshman 15. I did these workouts when I was in my growing phase, putting on mass before I started practicing for my bikini competition. I did these workouts on prep to maintain lean body mass and keep getting shredded for the stage. And I also did these workouts post prep when I looked like a freaking skeleton to put some mass back on that ass. These workouts took me from chubby to lean and curvy. And they took me from looking like a bean pole to actually looking feminine with a nice hourglass shape. So let's not waste any time. We're gonna get into how to build a freaking shelf. But if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video if you find it helpful. Now let's get into it. All right, all right, easy. Before we get into the actual workout, we need to spend like five, 10 minutes warming up our muscles. Every good workout starts with a proper warm up, and we're gonna do some dynamic warm ups, not static stretches. So if you're doing, you know, some of these, stop, stop that, stop that. We're gonna do some dynamic movements, and this is what my warm up looks like. So the first movement in our leg day is hip thrust. So this is basically the structure of the leg day. We're gonna have three compound movements, starting with my personal favorite, hip thrust. Then we're gonna go into dumbbell RDLs, some leg press, and then we're gonna finish up our workout with two isolation workouts, leg extensions and hip abductors. We start our workouts with the compound movements because these engage a lot of different muscle groups and joints, and they require the most energy expenditure. This is why we put them at the beginning of our workout so we can go balls to the wall with our compound movements and then come back and hit those tinier muscles that really didn't get focused on too much in our big lifts in the isolations. Our rep range for hip thrust is gonna be three sets of six to eight. These are our working sets. So say you're a big dog and you can hip thrust 315. That's amazing, I absolutely love that for you, but we need to do some warm up sets. Those warm up sets are not included in the three sets of six that are programmed. I would recommend doing anywhere from one to three warm up sets before your working sets in order to get our glutes and hamstrings engaged and ready to go. It's really important that you have one of these pads. If you don't have a pad or if your gym doesn't offer these, I would recommend just folding up a yoga mat so you can protect your hip bones. Properly setting up your hip thrust is extremely important. So I'm gonna do it without the bar first. You want the bench to be in the middle of your spine, essentially right below your shoulder blades. And when we come up at the top of our movement, we want our knees to be at a 90 degree angle. If our feet are too close, we're using way too much quad engagement. And if our feet are way too far apart, it's all hamstring. We wanna work the glutes and hammies equally. How I have found the easiest way to set up my hip thrust is I have my legs, hip width apart and bring one leg up so my heel is in line with my knee. That's the perfect distance away from my body for when I come up to be at a perfect 90 degree angle. So what you wanna think about is scooping your hips up and keeping everything tight from the top of your head to your tailbone. It's all moving together and we're keeping all of this strict. The only thing that's moving is our hips driving up into the sky. And at the top, you're squeezing your glutes and thinking about pushing your knees up straight up, not out. So everything's in line here. You wanna roll, line up the pad with your hips, lift that leg so you can get the perfect distance. Keep chin tucked. We want to have a neutral spine at all times. Grab onto the bar so everything stays in place. 
drive through your heels and push your hips up to the sky. The more control you have over the movement, the more you're going to get out of the actual workout. So controlling it on the way up, squeezing and holding, and also controlling it on the way down. And we're avoiding throwing our head back, so like... <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right, so our next movement is dumbbell RDLs. There's multiple different variations of the RDL. I like barbell, I like Smith machine, and I also like dumbbell. Since we started with barbell hip thrust, I figured let's mix it up and do some dumbbell RDLs. So we're going to be doing a four sets of 10. Our legs are already kind of warm from the hip thrust, but this is a whole different movement that's recruiting different muscles. So I suggest doing one to two warm up sets before you hop in to your working sets. Before we even get into the actual movement, I want to explain some very important things when it comes to the RDL. There's a lot of stuff happening in this one movement. It's a hip hinge movement. So what that means is that you're driving your hips back and that is allowing your front half to fold over. So all you're thinking about is driving your hips straight back and keeping your hips high, almost as if you're on a, someone's pulling you with a string back and up. So like this, and you'll feel all of that, this should all be engaged. We want to keep everything from the top of our head to our tailbone moving in a straight line. It's almost like you have this PVC pipe and everything is moving together. We're not doing this. Where chin is tucked, pelvis is tucked, and we're driving our hips straight back and you're going to stop as soon as you stop feeling the stretch in your glutes and hamstrings. What's comfortable for me is to stop right below my knees. After I reach past this point, I start incorporating my lower back and that takes tension off of my glutes and hamstrings, which is what we're trying to work. Your lower back muscles will be engaged. You have to keep your lower back tight, but it's not, your lower back muscles are not what we're working. We're gonna stand with our feet shoulder width apart you're gonna roll your shoulders back and we want our lats to be engaged. Basically what this means is that the weight is not gonna be flailing all over the place. We just want our back tight. So eventually you'll, if you're new to the gym, you'll be like, lats engaged, like what? Like, you'll get it. So you're gonna tuck your chin, keep your upper body tight, wrist in front of you. We're not, we don't want our arms out to the side. We want our wrists facing forwards and we're going to travel with the weight as close to our body the entire time. We don't want the weight out here. We don't want the weight out here. We want the weight as close to our body the entire time. And you're driving your hips straight back, stopping right below your knees, squeezing through the glutes to bring it right back up. So you can get a better view this way. Chin tucked. Drive your hips back, slow, slow, slow. Squeeze to bring it back up. Okay, and our third and final compound movement of the day, leg press. Our rep range for leg press is gonna be three sets of 10. So depending on how heavy, how much weight you're gonna load on this thing, you could do one to two warm up sets. Our legs are already pretty warm from our hip thrust and RDLs, but we haven't really worked our quads too much. So get your legs warm, but not overly fatigued. Do one to two warm up sets and then hop into your working sets. You could put your feet in multiple different areas if you're depending on what you're trying to work. So if your feet are closer and higher together, that's going to engage more of your glutes and hamstrings, glutes and hamstrings. For this specific workout, I wanna target more of my quads. So I will have my feet about hip width, shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit wider. And I sometimes angle my toes out just a tad, nothing like crazy. So what you wanna focus on here is keeping your lower back pressed into the pad. We don't want our hips to be coming up or arching like a weirdo. What you wanna focus on is having everything locked in, everything in place, and the only thing working are your legs. So we're gonna grab on and have our base secure, and you're going to drive your knees back and out. Think about driving them into your armpits. So I like to lean forward just a tad, and I will go until my depth. Everybody's body is different, so go as low as you can. If you start to feel your lower back engage, 
cut it off there. I would encourage you to work on your depth over time because more range of motion equals more muscle growth in my opinion, but do what feels comfortable for you. If something is painful, we want to avoid that, but we also want to be challenging ourselves. So we're driving our knees down and out and pressing up and through. Something I see super commonly with leg press is not having fluid reps. So resting way too long at the top, just hanging out here. We want to keep constant tension on the muscle that we are working. So what that means is that we're not resting at the top. We are keeping things moving. My quads are controlling how slow the weight is moving towards me. So the slower you go, the more control you have, the more you're working your muscles. So at this point, your legs should be feeling like jello, but we are not quite done yet. You do not need to do 15 plus workouts to build your glutes. I promise I've been doing four to seven movements in my leg days for the past five, six years. And I've been able to continuously grow muscle by implementing progressive overload every single week and staying consistent. If you put all of your effort into these five, six exercises that you do every single week, there is no way that your body will not change. For our leg extensions, we're gonna be doing three sets of 12. So the main point of this movement is to take whatever energy we have left in our quads and use it all up, okay? Just because it's at the end of our workout, just because it's an isolation movement and not a big compound movement, doesn't mean that we're not putting all of our effort into this movement. Leg extensions can be as hard or as easy as you make them, just like every other workout that you do. So what you wanna do is lock your body in. If your arms are too short to hold on to these things, grab the pad. You want your chest back because we're gonna get a full stretch in the quads. So when you're leaning backward, your quad is able to stretch a little bit more. My butt is going to be smushed to the pad the entire time. My hips are not coming off the pad. We're staying locked in. The only thing that's working is our quads. At the top, you wanna to hold for two seconds, slowly control the weight on the way down, and then right back into it. Think about the difference in the muscle that you will build if your workouts look like this versus this. When you have control of every single inch of the movement, your muscles are working the entire time. We're keeping constant tension on the muscle and that is where the muscle building happens. So we are on the final isolation movement of our entire workout with our compound movements. So we did hip thrusts and RDLs those were really working the big muscle groups in our legs, our glutes and hamstrings, and our glute maximus specifically. Abductors are going to allow us to isolate the glute minimus and medius to get a full rounded glute. If we're gonna train our glutes, we're gonna train all of our glutes and we're here to do it correctly. Okay, so getting this baby set up, you're gonna hop in. So when, you're, when your knees are traveling outwards, that is an abduction. And when they're going inwards, that is ad. ADD duction. So what you want to do is adjust this so it's on the so it's on the closest setting. So your knees are close together and we're going to be driving them outwards. We're going for three sets of 30 here. So these are going to be slow and controlled. Just like with the leg extension, there's a total difference between this twiddling your thumbs, not really paying attention, to this. When you have control of the movement, you're working the muscle the entire time. Every single second of the rep, your muscles are putting in work. As, as opposed to doing this, your muscles are getting a break because you're flinging the freaking weight around. We don't, don't, we don't train like that. I feel more of a contraction. I feel my glutes working more when I lean forward, but this is all bio-individuals. You can hold on, you can hold on to your hips. Sometimes I switch whatever feels right. You can pray to the booty gods. <laughs> Sometimes I'll catch myself doing this. And that is it, that's the entire leg workout, literally five movements. If you train with consistent effort and intensity with these workouts, I promise you will be seeing results. All that's left to do now is to stretch out. So take 
five-ish minutes, slow your breathing. Any type of strength training workout is stressful to our body. So take a little bit of time to do some slow, deep breaths and calm our nervous system. This is super important to do, especially before you eat a meal, because if your body is still in go, go, go mode from training like a big dog, you're not gonna digest your food very well. I go super in depth of every single thing to do from before you leave for the gym, while you're there, and afterwards in this video. So if you're new to the gym or you're just looking for some more guidance and advice, make sure you check this video out. It's super, super helpful. It's important to understand that it's less about the actual workouts that you do and more about the effort and intensity that you train with. So there's a huge difference between just working out and training. You could have the best workout plan in the entire world, but if you're just going through the motions, you're never going to see your body change. If you are not challenging your body, you are not gonna see any results. It's also important that you remember that training is literally only one piece of the puzzle. How you rest and recover and repair your muscles is just as important. So you need to be making sure that you are eating enough for your body to repair itself and to thrive that you're sleeping enough to recover, and that you're also drinking enough water. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope that you found this video valuable and that you're feeling confident enough to walk into the gym and put some freaking mass on that ass, okay? It is 2024, okay? There is no reason that every single woman in the gym is not on a mission to build a goddamn shelf, okay? So if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also like this video if you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.